Hey everybody, welcome back. Izola here with Flick Direct, and I just watched the new Twisters movie and thought I'd pop on here and give you my thoughts on it. So buckle up, sit back, relax, and let's get this started. I still remember how pumped I was to see the original Twister when it came out in 1996. I was always fascinated with tornadoes and just scared of how much damage it could do, especially in Tornado Alley. So when this movie was coming out, I really wanted to learn more and see what it was going to offer us. And I mean, it was one of those first movies that really did CGI pretty well. I mean, the tornado and the cow, if you don't know what I'm talking about, definitely go and check it out. And then you also had the star studded cast. I mean, there was Helen Hunt, my favorite, Bill Paxton, and of course, the amazing Philip Seymour Hoffman. So really, you couldn't go wrong. Even the script was great, the directing was really well done. It was just, it earned its stripes as a cult classic for sure, at least in my book. Now, going into the sequel, I really wasn't expecting it to surpass the original. I mean, what other movies really do that? I mean, Top Gun did. So I guess you could say it can happen. I mean, honestly, I wouldn't say surpassed because they were fairly different movies, Maverick and the original Top Gun, but still did really, really well as a sequel or for so many years in the future. And we know time and time again that usually doesn't happen. So I was definitely setting my expectations very, very low when I saw this. Now, this movie jumps right into action when you have the tornado whisperer, Kate Carter, played by Daisy Edgar Jones, who's hoping to tame a tornado for a big grant. Now, not to really give too much away, but of course, it all goes wrong because you need that to happen. And unfortunately, it doesn't really turn out well for the team or Kate's boyfriend. I think you can use your imagination to figure out what happens until you actually see the movie if you haven't already. Now, after this unfortunate situation with the tornado and the loss of her friends, we cut to five years later. Kate is working in New York City at the National Weather Center, and she gets a visit from the lone survivor one of her friends who was Javi. He shows up with this new tornado tracking system and somehow is able to talk her back into getting out in the field. I don't know, me personally, I don't think I could do that after so much, it, it would just be too much for me. But, you know, I guess if you really just have a love for tornado tracking, it would be kind of hard to pass up, especially if you could play with the new tracking system. The film follows her new team and how they cross paths with a, I don't know, would you call him a YouTube celebrity uh, named Tyler and his crew. I think you're going to spot some familiar faces in this movie. I mean, obviously the YouTuber is Glenn Powell and we've seen him in a lot of movies lately. He, he definitely plays a YouTube influencer pretty well in this. The film was directed by Lee Isaac Chung, who actually grew up in a Midwestern town, and he really wanted to be as authentic as possible for this movie, so he made sure that they could film in Oklahoma in Tornado Alley. I mean, it doesn't get more real than that, right? His direction and the way that he used CGI and real tornado footage is really quite eerie, to be honest, especially when you know that it is real footage. I would not want to be right in the middle of that. I mean, you have to definitely be an adrenaline junkie if you're gonna be a tornado chaser. I, I just don't have that in me. Now, some of the script that was written is a little cheesy and a bit cliched, and some of the I don't know, phrases just seem a little forced. Like at one point you hear, that's our tornado, baby. 
not said like that. I mean, it was obviously better done than that, but you get my point. There's just some cheesiness to it, but overall, it was just a really fun movie that was really well directed. Now, Glenn Powell's character is kind of the Bill Paxton in this, and you kind of have to think about how big those shoes are to fill because Bill Paxton was really, really great in the first one. But if we're looking at this as more of a standalone or, you know, going into the future, however many years after the original, he definitely delivers the charm and confidence. He does a really great job. He seriously, he's just very charming. I think with the first movie, you got a lot of chemistry in the beginning. You could tell there was a lot of angst and just tension between Helen and Bill Paxton. And in this one, you didn't really feel that. To be honest, it, it kind of felt a little forced, but it does get better as the movie progresses. So maybe those scenes were actually filmed in order and they just weren't used to acting with each other. Sometimes it takes a bit to warm up to one another. Sometimes you don't warm up at all, but it, it does get better, I promise. Now, the plot is obviously kind of familiar if you pit it against other movies. You're getting two competing forces, so that would be the Storm Chasers, and then you have other issues that come to play within people who are together. So Javi and Kate have an issue. And then of course you have Tyler and Kate. And so it's just, there's a lot of back and forth and things that you're going to have to guess on, but they do kind of follow a similar pattern as other movies, but still a lot of fun. But at the end of the day, let's face it, the highlight of this movie is the tornado or tornadoes. That's what we're really here to see, right? What the script might be lacking, the CGI and the real tornado, you know, film just really kind of brings it back in and gets you excited to watch the movie. Now, I still don't think it was as impactful as the first one, and maybe that's just because I'm older and I knew what was coming because, again, I really did enjoy the original. So it didn't really blow me away too much. I mean, I think one of my favorite things was the, the moment the chicken landed on the car and, you know, it wasn't a cow, but it was still an animal. And don't worry, no animals were hurt in this movie, or at least none that they've told us, but, you know, they've got strict rules now. No animals harmed. If you are a huge fan of disaster films, I highly recommend this movie. Again, it's not going to be like the original. You're not going to get the same type of chemistry. It's not going to really be as new seeing the tornadoes again, because if you've seen the original, you're already expecting certain things. But at the end of the day, it is a really well done disaster film. It is pretty much true to the location. Because like I said, the director grew up in the Midwest and had dealings with them. So I really think that it's impressive that he tried to make it as authentic as possible. Now critics on Rotten Tomatoes have given it, I think, uh, 75%. It might be rising, who knows. Um, last I checked, it was at that. And 91% from audiences. So obviously, this is really doing well. Twisters grossed over... 310 million worldwide as we are speaking. And that makes it, I believe, the fifth highest grossing movie in 2024 so far. If you are looking for something exciting and fun to watch after Deadpool and Wolverine, trust me, nothing can compare to that. So d don't think that this is going to surpass that. I don't think anything's going to surpass that for a very long time. But if you do want a fun disaster movie with lots of destruction and, you know, a little bit of humor and a little bit of romance put in there, I would definitely recommend watching this. And you can rent it or buy it now on Prime, iTunes, or any of the other digital platforms.
Warner Brothers hasn't released a digital release date in the UK yet, but I'm sure it's right around the corner. So for all those people out in the lovely UK, you're just gonna have to wait a little longer unless if you have a good VPN, but you didn't hear that from me. Overall, Twisters pays homage to the original while also allowing itself to stand alone and be its own film. It's fun, it's exciting, the CGI is great, and like I said, the real tornado footage is really, really eerie and impressive. I would say overall, I give this movie a three and a half out of five, just because there are a few things that I would really like to change in the plot and maybe a little bit of the chemistry, but overall, it's definitely a fun movie. Now be sure to check back with us because you know when I get the 4K UHD, I'm going to give you more detail on audio and visuals. It's, you know it's gonna be stunning. I mean, the visuals are already great. Just adding, you know, that additional to it is just, oh, it's chef's kiss. But you'll have to wait for that because there is no release date yet. But once I find that out, I will definitely let you guys know. And with that, this concludes my review of Twisters. I really hope you enjoyed it. And if you do watch it, please let me know down in the comments of what you thought. I'd really love to hear your opinions. Thank you for joining me on this storm chasing ride. And I will see you next time. Be sure to subscribe and like to all of our channels so you don't miss out on any entertainment news. Have a great night and we'll see you next time. Bye.